I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Travis Reeder, the CTO of GoChain. Travis, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today, and thank you for being here. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here. I'm excited to be on. You're very welcome. Let's kick it off by talking about GoChain. Could you please start by giving us an overview of why you originally created GoChain and what was the team's vision? Sure. So uh, basically, our goal from the beginning was to fix Ethereum scaling problems. We kind of saw in, in uh, late 2017, you know, a uh, bunch of activity was happening, you know, crypto kitties, things like that, where the network slowed to a halt and transaction fees went sky high. And my background's in cloud infrastructure. So I've been building, you know, scalable systems for for a long time my, my previous company was a cloud infrastructure company uh you know our, our biggest problem was how to scale things so i uh, sold that and then i also worked on oracle's cloud after that and then we started go chain um but yeah so we set out to do that and our, our original goal was to try to get to 100x what ethereum's at and since they're only at 13 transactions per second we our target was 1300. um you know we just thought that was a good goal and then we accomplished that goal um you know, at 13 transactions per second, you can't really even support a single application, let alone thousands or potentially hundreds of thousands in the future. So that was that was the original vision and goal, yeah. That's great. So you guys are providing more scalability than Ethereum and hopefully at less cost as well. What is the main difference between GoChain and Ethereum when people aren't familiar with either, really? What's the easiest way to describe the difference? Is it the consensus mechanism or... Yeah, so so we tried to also, one of our goals is to be 100% compatible with Ethereum so that you could take all your smart contracts and your your apps that use Ethereum and, and kind of shift over if you needed the performance. Um, but yeah, to get those speeds, a lot of it was the consensus algorithm. We had to get rid of proof of work because that's just can't scale, period. Um, so we switched to a consensus called proof of reputation where we have big companies running nodes, for instance, Dish Networks is running a company, Sling TV, uh, and and a bunch of other companies, uh, you know, all around the globe. So so our, our, repu our, our model is these big companies, you can trust them, there's a lot on the line, the reputation's on the line. Um, and doing that, we also were able to uh, be more decentralized, actually, if you look at the companies running them and uh, ge geography, and, uh, and board is a magnitude uh, more green, like use less energy. So, you know, at least a thousand, probably 10,000 times less energy than the Ethereum network. Wow. And you guys, I, I understand that you have the ability to run a public blockchain as well as private blockchains or hybrid blockchains. Uh, why would enterprises be interested in running a private blockchain or a hybrid blockchain? Sure. Uh, so uh, a common use case for this is banks trying to do settlements, cross-border settlements between banks. I think this is one of the the ones where private blockchain is really shining. Um, it, you know, instead of banks going through the SWIFT system, which actually uses human beings to, uh, you know, verify transactions and things like that, uh, you can use private blockchain networks between these banks to and settle these transactions within seconds kind of thing. And everybody, you know, agrees and comes to consensus on this blockchain. So uh, that's, a, that's a really good one. And, and you can imagine there's a bunch of use cases that companies might want to set up between you know, different parties, so they all agree on the same set of data, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I understand that Ethereum can also create private blockchains as well, but I'm guessing that still uses the proof of work consensus algorithm. Is that the reason that banks per se would be using GoChain rather than Ethereum? Uh, yeah, Ethereum's, they're really focused on the public network side of things. And it just so happens that the way we built our public network is, you know, with this this uh, network of corporations running these nodes that works great in a private environment too. And we've done some benchmarks and tests. Now, it wasn't only the consensus algorithm that we changed. We also optimized the code a lot. We've uh, done a whole bunch of other stuff in the background. We've, we've created ways to store the storage off uh, in cloud storage, sort of offline, off the chain, so you don't have to have it all on disk because these blockchains are getting really big now. And most people can't store that on a single disk. So we've created all these tools and stuff to help these companies uh, manage the blockchain and stuff too. And it's all open source, it's all Dockerized, so you can spin up these, these networks pretty easily. 
That's great. And what kind of companies are you guys already working with in the market? Uh, so we're working, uh, some of the recent announcements were uh, Dish Networks. Uh, they're actually running a node and we're working on a project with them. Uh, they're pretty big into blockchain and uh, Microsoft, we're doing a POC project with them. So those are a couple of the more recent big ones. Uh, you guys at Event Chain. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it does yeah, work the, very well for large scale ticketing as well. Ethereum just can't handle large venues to sell a lot of tickets, right? So it does only make sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And who would you say are your ideal clients? Microsoft sounds huge. Um, is that your ideal client or are you looking for those other cloud services like the companies that you worked for in the past? Um, I mean, obviously the ideal client, the bigger the customer, the better. Uh, so we've actually been focused quite a bit on the enterprise lately. Uh, you know, and that's how we came up with the Dish and the Microsoft stuff. Uh, so that's kind of our target market is enterprise. And I, I feel like they, they have more need for blockchain uh, things and their customers actually, like for example, Microsoft may not need blockchain for themselves, but their customers need it. So, yeah. uh, you know, they're good avenues to partner with to, to get leads and get new customers, yeah. That makes sense. And it sounds like you guys have made huge progress so far, especially with this Microsoft partnership. So how far along is the project from the inception? When did you first start coding it and how long did it take to get it into the market? We started thinking about it in 2017, probably in the summer or early 2017. Uh, we really started going for it probably uh, late 2017, early 2018. We did our uh, token sale early 2018. Uh, sold that out in a couple minutes actually. And almost a year ago today, May 2nd was uh, token sale date. Congratulations. And uh, we launched our main, main net on May 15th. So we're almost coming up on our year anniversary of the main net being live. That's amazing. And is the product right now, you know, fully functioning for these large scale enterprise clients? And what does the development roadmap look like? Is it, you know, heavy in features that are coming out still? Yeah, so this year we focused a lot on performance and scalability, scalability last year. We're still foc focusing on that, but we also wanna you know, get adoption is our kind of main goals for this year. So with that, we're coming out with more tools. Uh, we just released a, a great uh, CLI tool called Web3 for developers to build and deploy smart contracts. It's kind of a replacement for Truffle. Um, uh, we're, we're also releasing an identity framework. In fact, that's what we're working with Microsoft on. Uh, and that's kind of these decentralized identities, which is also a W3C specification that's uh, being built. So working on that because, you know, with these applications, you sort of need, you need these identities that people can own and, and uh, you know, authenticate with and things like that. Um, we're also working on uh, trying to get some payment type solutions in place so people can you know, build on GoChain and take payments and make that easy for developers to, to get on. So we're really focusing on adoption this year and, and uh, you know, performance. Performance is a constant thing, but, mm -hmm. but we want to make that it features out too. Yeah, with your current scalability, 1300 transactions per second, you mentioned, is that going to be enough for all of these clients around the world simultaneously? And what is the next goal beyond that? Uh, I don't think it's enough for everybody simultaneously. That said, it's it's more than enough for all the Bitcoin transactions, all the Ethereum transactions. Uh, uh, for reference, if CryptoKitties launched on GoChain, it wouldn't have caused any gas wars. So uh, it, it could handle today's needs for sure. Yeah. Um, but it probably can't handle the future yeah. yet. So our next goal is to not do another 10x. We want to get to 13,000 transactions per second. That's kind of the next one. And then we'll then we'll be in this sort of the same realm of Visa transactions. So that's great. And how are you guys creating this into a sustainable business? Is, are there revenue models behind this? Um, and if so, what does that look like right now? Yeah. So uh, again, on the enterprise side of things, we're trying to help these enterprise build solutions on top of GoChain. So so we have a service uh, services model where. You know, they can hire us to help them build things, architect their, their applications, things like that. Um, 
also do workshops and whatnot. So yeah, we, so we have a services model that goes along with our, our network and our open source software. That's great. And what would you say the biggest challenges for GoChain moving forward? I know you mentioned you know, acquisition or customer acquisition. Is that just going to require more marketing or are there other challenges to think about as well? Yeah, marketing is always uh, a big thing and uh, you know, we, we try to do our best there. Um, but you know, when you're going after these enterprise companies, a lot of it's direct sales, right? And, and connections and networking. So uh, we're tapping into our network. And like I said, I've, I've worked for Oracle and I'm an advisor at Salesforce too. So we, you know, pretty connected in the Silicon Valley uh, system. So we're, we're utilizing those channels. That's good. Well, it sounds like you guys are making great progress so far. Uh, if enterprise clients or other developers and people looking to get involved with GoChain are looking to find out more information, what's the best way to get in contact with you guys? Uh, they can go to our website at gochain.io um, or, or send us an email, info at gochain.io. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best way. Awesome. Well, congratulations on all the success so far. I'm looking forward to seeing this 13,000 transactions per second that you're speaking of. And uh, yeah. we'll see how the identity system works as well, because I know that's going to be very important, especially for banks and financial institutions. Without any KYC, you really have no idea who you're working with, right? So that sounds that's like right. a major milestone for GoChain. So let's follow up in the coming months when you've done some more development and we can see how GoChain is progressing. And until then, thank you so much for your time, Travis. Yeah, thank you, Ashton. Pleasure.